have your phone on you? I do. Okay, I'll text you when Alright. Alright, it's Friday. It doesn't look like it dried up very much. There is mud everywhere. Guess we got a few transformers over here we need to load up. Looks like they've, uh, they've either removed some of these stairs or they've got a little pickup truck running back and forth doing this stuff. Lots and lots of barriers to move. Woke up this morning, I still feel like I'm a little sick. But the show must go on. We'll definitely be working this weekend. There's no way we're gonna get this stuff today. These are uh, giant wires. Here, I'll hop out and show you guys real fast. These are giant wires that they had running from one end to the other. And they're just chopping them up into bits. Let me show them this wire real fast. I mean, it's, ma it's massive wire. I mean, that's, I can't even wrap my hand around that thing. That's what she said. Massive wire that they're just cutting into like, I don't know, 10 foot sections. So they can take it to the scrap yard. They're supposed to be moving all this stuff uh, over to Texas and resetting everything back up. And I guess it's just too big of a pain in the butt to reuse that wire again. So they're just chopping it up and scrapping it. Look at it. He's using that uh, mini excavator to pull it out of the ground. Wild. They said this guy made uh, $20 million on this facility while it was set up. I think it was only here for a couple years. And now it's got to go. Yeah, so there'll be a lot of containers coming out of here going to Texas. Here in, uh, I don't know how long it'll take. I imagine they gotta get the site ready over there before they ship all the containers over there. They gotta get the site, run all the wires like they've done here. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah, surely they're not just gonna let those things stack up over there. But who knows? Well, today's Friday. It looks like it's definitely gonna take the whole weekend. Who knows, this might spill into next week. I'd be okay with that. all those concrete barriers out of the way and now they're stacking wire in our way. Bro, we literally have to drive where you're putting that wire. Just run over the wire? Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do. Yeah, I mean, there's no, like, I have to be stuff. able to swing wide enough to get out of this gate. Seems like there's always somebody parked where you have to turn around at. Always somebody in a little pickup truck or, or they're always stacking something somewhere. It's like, you guys can literally see we've been using this area. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can get out. I'm going to have to completely drive over that wire because I barely made it out. I mean, they could see where we've been going in there and spinning around, and now it's like they're stacking like stacks of two by fours and other crap in the way. All right, it is. Uh, it's twelve o'clock now. Uh, we're still not unloaded from our second loads. 
Um, he's working on it now. It's just, it's just a bunch of BS. It's nothing on these guys. It's just, I don't know. Time consuming. Time consuming. I don't know if I told you guys, but the broker called us uh, Friday, asked us if we could work this weekend. And then he just called me up again saying, um, would I be available next week too? So probably going to be like Tuesday, Wednesday next week as well, which I'm completely fine with. Like, more work the merrier, you know? I'm good with it. It's going to suck to work all through the weekend and then Monday and Tuesday again, but probably after that we're going to um, go on vacation to like maybe the Keys or something. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Take another cruise. What do you think? Probably not. But it's work. And I can't say no to work uh, this close to home. So, I don't know. 12.08 and we're still, we still have our second load on us. So, all those concrete barriers, they're trying to give away. They want to give those things away so that they don't have to deal with it. Um, and nobody wants them. <laughs> Like, who's going to want that? I, I mean, they they tried to contact Scruggs and Reams, which is our concrete companies that, like, do all the interstate work, and it seems like they don't even want They don't have a place to put them. Oh, I'm sure they do, but... Mm -hmm. They probably don't want to deal with, like, unloading them and loading them and putting them somewhere. Yeah. That's a lot. It's going to be a lot loading and moving those things. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of work. I think the crane guys came back. I think the crane guys are going to grab a couple. That or they're grabbing that aluminum stuff. I don't know what they're grabbing. But they came back with a pickup truck and a, and a little, like, 16-foot trailer. So they're going to be... They're loading something up out there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they're taking. I mean, if they're just giving shit away, I'll take some of that aluminum stuff that they had out there. I mean, they got all those electrical boxes, too. I don't know if those are going to Texas oh. or... Yeah, I mean, I think you could get rid of those. Those are pretty expensive. I don't know. So I guess we're booked up till uh, Tuesday of next week. <laughs> I'm good with it. If it goes on, it goes on. We'll keep keep going back and forth. You know? Yeah. I was worried we were done last week at like yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday. I didn't realize they wanted us to move all this stuff, too. Well, because ours says containers. Yeah, because ours says containers. Well, it's good news. So, it's Saturday. I don't know what that means. I guess we're going to be doing concrete barriers probably all day. I have no idea what this other truck is doing here. I think he lost. I don't know, I don't know what he's doing. He's got a wash more wood maybe? Uh I don't I don't know man. He's definitely blocking everybody.
All right. Before y'all start freaking out about the load, it's a brand new forklift driver, so give him a break. Plus, we're only going a couple of miles down the road. At the max I do is like 30 mile an hour. So we loaded the other truck this morning and we did nine on the other truck. I don't want to do nine because it's really heavy. Uh, and it just, man, it took so long this morning. I don't know what time it is. And I bet it took us two hours to get, not an hour to load them. And like, it's easier just to throw six on here. Plus the guy unloading us was having a hard time judging his forks and not, not knocking them over. I mean, if we were going any further, I'd, I'd be like, we got to straighten this up, but Yeah, these are engineers running these things. They're, they don't even run forklifts. They sit in offices. Uh, he left to go get us a uh, pooper house. So that's fantastic. We haven't had a pooper out here in a couple of days, which uh, is a little stressful, huh? It's been like a whole week. Well, I mean, we had, the building had a toilet in it, but there at the, like, the last four or five days, they just stopped stocking it. So we started bringing our own roll of toilet paper just in case but then like the last three days they were tearing the building down and it felt weird to go in there and start using the bathroom when they're like taking the roofs off, off roof off and stuff it's like am i going to be in there pooping and they start un uninstalling the doors that'd be weird huh yeah so this is what we got it is what it is it's not pretty but uh Yeah, it would definitely, so we, this morning, they've got some uh, straps that we started hooking to these hooks and then uh, picking them up. And that was, that was making it a lot easier to like maneuver it around and make them a lot straighter. But then these started snapping off. They got like two of them loaded and then we tried to do three more after that. One, like it snapped off and we went to the next one. It snapped off, went to the next one, it snapped off and we we're like, I guess we can't use these, uh, choker ropes anymore so they're having to dig up underneath of them with the forks and then what causes that is like it doesn't get straight on the forks and then they end up picking up a bunch of dirt i tried to tell them this morning hey let's move these railroad ties over where we're going to be working you can quickly pick them up set them on the railroad ties that'll knock the dirt off of the forks and then you could come into it straight without like it getting pushed around. And then he almost got stuck this morning over here. So, I don't know, there's still a decent amount of stuff out here. I don't know if we're gonna be moving all of this. I imagine we are. Everything Basically everything out here, I mean everything has to go, but I don't know. Who knows? So I don't know if I told you guys we got more of the story. Um, so the reason they're pulling out of Adel, this is this is called Cook County. The reason they're pulling out of Cook County is because a lot of places will tell you peak time, like during peak times of electricity usage, you get charged more on your electricity bill. So like Texas lets them know, hey, if you use power between this time and this time, this is gonna be the cost rather than if you use power between this time and this time. So what was happening here was Cook County refused to give them the times that the power goes up because what they do is they program these things to shut down during the expensive times and then to kick back on during the not expensive times. Well, they could never, they never knew when those times were here. So he was saying, some days their electric bill was like a hundred thousand dollars for that day just for one day usage <laughs> and they refused to tell them what times were the peak times here so they're like screw you guys plus there is uh there's an older couple i guess it was on the news and everything that lives in the woods over here on the other side of this berm that they built and they were complaining that these fans were too loud that the fans on these buildings were too loud for their house over there in the woods when obviously we're in an industrial park. 
you know, the people, I don't know how long the houses have been there, so I, 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 I can't honestly say, but what happens a lot of times is people buy super cheap land, like close to a drag strip. Like the drag strip is down the road there on the right. People will come in here, buy the land because it's super cheap, because it's next to a drag strip, because people don't want to have to hear it. They build their house and then they get tired of hearing it and then they start complaining and then the tracks start closing down. It's like you put yourself in the situation. This industrial park was here, the drag strip was here, that is your own fault. Like Cletus is going through that same issue with his racetrack. They're building crazy amounts of neighborhoods around his racetrack and now they're all like, oh, it's too noisy. Well, you stupid dummy, you built right next to a race car track. Of course it's loud. All right, anyways, are you done strapping this down yet, woman? Why? Yeah, that needs one more click. It's nice though, we're out here by ourselves, even though they have junk everywhere, like there's, it's getting harder and harder to turn around out here. At least we don't have dummies parking their cars in front of, in the way. Let's see if we can get one more out of this. I think we can get two more out of this. No, we can't, that's pretty tight. You good with that woman? Yes. Ding, ding. Ding ding, we can throw them off. I was putting, uh, we did one load of these yesterday, late yesterday. Today's Saturday, by the way. Um, I feel amazing, let me stick this in there. I feel so much better today than I had the last two days. Man, I was feeling rough those two days. Um, and I, I do believe it was because we went and visited mom at the hospital that I probably picked up a little something. She's, they, they let her go home by the way yesterday, but she's still pretty sick, so. But we did a uh, did a load of these yesterday. I don't know what I was, oh. We were having to stack three boards because the forks would have so much dirt on them that when they set it down, they couldn't get it back out from underneath because there was so much dirt. So I was having to stack three boards per pile. And now we've got a bunch of extra boards. So seems like he's doing a little bit better of a job scooping them up without taking too much of the dirt. That uh, I think it'll be all right. Ugh. It was, uh, it was pretty bad yesterday. Maybe we'll start, he'll start getting to where we can straighten them up and, I mean, I could run this thing, but then he'd be out of a job. I'm not in a big hurry. I want this project to go as long as it is, as long as it can. That just means more time we get to spend at the house, more, uh, more money we make. So I think what we're gonna do is after this uh, project is over with, um, Surprise, surprise, the uh, APU radiator's leaking again. But what we've been doing a lot here is we've been running the truck and the APU at the same time. That way we don't have to keep starting and stopping the APU when we were coming back and forth. Well, we're leaving it on standby. And we're, well, we were leaving it on though. And I think that put a lot of pressure on the lines. And um, right there where I aluminum welded it, Someone in the comments gets mad because I call it welding. It's not welding, it's soldering. No, I'm welding it, bro, I'm a welder. Anyways, I should be able to pull that off at the house and actually maybe TIG weld it. Or uh, just break out the spool welder. I don't know what we'll do. Oh, anyways, so when we're done with this project, we're gonna go back to the house. I gotta fix that. We're gonna go ahead and send off the shifter stock because that's happening a lot. Um, and I gotta figure out, we keep getting these errors on the dash, we can get in the truck, Babs. And we noticed when we picked this thing up from the shop, we had a, uh, we had a shop do some work on this thing. Some shoddy work. Um, our Bendex wasn't working anymore. Uh, I had them install a gauge. None of these gauges were hooked back up. And because that Bendex isn't working anymore, I think that's what's given us the adaptive cruise fault. So they've unhooked something, they've they've screwed something up somewhere. So, dang, he's back fast. Anyways, let's, uh, let's get over to this other job site, get this stuff dropped. And now it's Sunday. We got uh, most of the barriers yesterday. Um, he's probably gonna be getting the last 
the last few if not we'll probably have a few on us and then they'll probably throw something else but we still have like a bunch of random stuff we have to get all these wires guess they're gonna keep these but they chopped up that other stuff I don't know what the difference is so we got those we got to get all that stuff up these big concrete uh, square deals in the middle a lot of electrical boxes basically everything everything here this has to be an empty field when we're done or when they're done I should say all right good morning it is uh, it's Monday this is the last day we've got to get the vaults they got the vaults pulled out yesterday late afternoon we've pretty much gotten everything else um, they said today's probably our last day. So we'll grab those concrete vaults. I think we gotta grab all these piles of wire today. All the little stuff, they said they're probably, they've got a little truck with a 16 foot trailer or whatever that they're loading up. I think they're gonna do the rest after today. All the little stuff with the little truck. But uh, yeah, they pretty much said today is our last day. Ah, uh, it's bittersweet. I mean, this is day 11 or 12 of being out here. And I've loved going home every night. It, this, this job has really been a blessing. It's, it's been really nice. Um, I'm completely sunburnt. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up. Let's see if my face is, if I look like a raccoon right now. I've, I brought my big straw hat. I've been wearing my big straw hat, but I definitely got sunburnt the other day. And, uh, yeah, you can kind of see, you can still see my sunglasses. Like I've had to do a lot of hand, we've, we've had to do a lot of hands on with this job. Just like, especially over the weekend working Saturday and Sunday, uh, because it was only one loader here and one unloader over there. So like, we're like chaining stuff up for them and they're setting it on our deck and definitely been outside a lot more than a truck driver usually is, you know? I don't know how many they're going to put on us here. Maybe three. Three of these volts. We hauled one yesterday. We were the we're only one to haul one so far. And uh, it didn't go too bad. Yeah, so last day. What do you think, Babs? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I called on this load. I almost didn't call on this load. I mean, maybe total, we've driven maybe 200 miles, and that's including us driving back to Valdosta, dropping the truck off every day. A lot of idle time. I've been high idle in this thing a lot. Like, so you don't want to shut it off unless, unless like right now, it's going to be a while before you get loaded. Over the weekend, it was like super slow. We did like maybe two, three loads a day because they'd have to go around and gather up stuff. And like, it's a lot of, I don't know, meticulous. Is that, would that be the word, woman? Yeah. Meticulous stuff. <sighs> I don't know. I've loved it. Oh, look at this little fridge I bought. I thought it was going to be bigger than this. So the deal is I bought this fridge up here a long time ago in the hot shot. And I don't even know if you could call it a fridge. It makes your drinks cool. Like you wouldn't want to put like milk or anything like that in this. Yeah. I think it was like $60 when I bought this thing. And now it's like a, over a hundred dollars to buy this. It's basically a cooler with a little fan in it that cools it off somehow. So I've been looking and looking. Oh, there's some doggy treats back there for something that we could fit in here. Like I was like, well, maybe we could put a mini fridge in here, but the mini fridge won't fit because it's it's not it's the mini fridge would be too uh, too tall. So I did find this the other day, um, but looking at the pictures, it looked bigger than what it is. <laughs> like it's it's kind of tiny. But it's an actual fridge. Like, you could keep milk and stuff in this. 
without it going bad. It's got like a temperature setting here and all. Runs off of uh, DC or AC or whatever. You can plug it in at, plug it in at your house. I think Lita's trying to figure it out right now. It might be a pain in the butt, like having to pull it out to open this lid. That's why we're gonna do it today. You know what I, else I thought about we could do? Replace this air fryer with one of those microwave air fryers and then put a fridge down here. Yeah. That might be what we should do. I don't know, I like that air fryer because it sautés and stuff. Yeah. I don't just use the air fryer. It's nice because that's like a pot too, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, get them things loaded up. Uh, last few days have kind of been early days. I think we left yesterday at like 3. Probably going to be an early day, day today. Probably take a couple of loads back and forth and... I mean, that'll be that, unless they just decide since they're paying us for the day, even if we have to put a bunch of little stuff on the trailer. Just the amount of money that, uh, that like, stuff like this costs, and the waste, the, they, they're so wasteful with stuff. Me and Lita's been spending the last few days, like, wait, when they're waiting to load us, we'll walk around, and it's like they've just dumped like washers and screws and everything else all over the place. So we've gone around and picked up like a bunch of screws and a bunch of washers and stuff. We've, we've probably got a, a ball of metal like that. Not that we're going to like scrap the metal, but they're like brand new screws and brand new washers. Why not pick it up and this save them? Bag. Oh, I've got a bunch on the dresser too. That I've had in my pockets that when we get home, I, I take them out of my pockets. Let me walk over here and uh, give them a hand. And uh, we'll see at the end of the day. This is, like I said, if this it's probably our last day. Unless they decide we're gonna run all these wire. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. Okay, so I plugged the fridge in. I moved all of our stuff out of this freezer and into this fridge. I packed a lunch for us. I've been. This thing has a good seal on it. I've been packing lunch for us almost almost every day. And this is our lunch. This has got a lot of stuff in it that shouldn't be frozen. And unfortunately, our freezer does tend to freeze stuff. So like mayonnaise, cheese, stuff that you don't want frozen, this is going to be really good for. It's been running for a little bit and it feels pretty cool. So that's good. But... Um, yeah, I've got a decent amount of stuff in here. There's tortillas on the bottom, shredded cheese, sliced cheese, mayonnaise, salsa, sour cream, and then the fajitas that we had last night and two drinks. And it fits in there. It feels like it's getting cool, so that's awesome. I think it'll work. It'll be nice to not have frozen, all frozen stuff. Um, this freezer does have a little compartment that is supposed to be the refrigerator side, but it's really, really small. And if the freezer isn't stocked full, stuff can fall out of the refrigerator side into the freezer side. So we've definitely had mayonnaise end up in the freezer container and go weird, just like separate itself. So... That'll be nice that this will just keep the mayonnaise at the temperature the mayonnaise needs to be to not get weird. And then I moved this stuff. This is where the little fridge cooler used to be. So I just put our dog food and stuff up here just to make more room because it's not going to go down there. That's usually where our waters go, where the radiator fluid is. And this truck is kind of a mess because of the loads that we've been doing. So, yeah, but I think that fridge is going to work.
truck is ready to go home. So oh yeah. It's like I'm tired of being here. It's concrete. <laughs> oh. I don't think so. No. It's so much heavier than you imagine. No, I know it's heavy. It's it's concrete. <laughs> For what? The cloud coverage. Look how red I am. <laughs> like a strawberry. Huh? Yeah. I don't know. Am I handling this wood okay? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. This has got wire in it. I don't know how I feel about throwing a strap through the middle of this. I feel like that's still too much leverage for that thing to bang around, man. Mm-hmm. That orange truck is crazy. Huh? That orange truck is crazy. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. do that. I'd rather one strap all the way over the top. You know? Mm-hmm. Put some corner protectors up there. Uh. 
Did y'all All right, it's Monday about 3.45. This is our last load out here. Such a bittersweet thing. Everything else they're gonna have to do with a pickup truck or they're gonna have to pay us to come back one more day. I think they're gonna do everything in a pickup truck. I think a lot of this stuff's, they got a dumpster here and a uh, company comes and empties it every day. The uh, other truck's gonna come back one more time for the little guard shack up there and then whatever else they can fit on them and that's it the uh, local racetrack has bought all the barriers you know i almost hit up the racetrack and was like hey because they were they were giving these barriers away they're like we'll just give them away if if anybody will come pick them up and nobody got back to them in time racetrack down the road says they'll take them i messaged them i'm like hey i'm the truck that took them down there if you need a truck to bring them to you hit me up so We'll see what happens. He just asked me for a quote. I told him a quote. I told him, uh, you don't even need forklift drivers. I can run the forklifts on both sides. Just get me a forklift on both sides and uh, we can get them on and off for you. So maybe we'll have some more local work. What do you think, woman? Yeah, maybe. I am absolutely fried. I don't know if the camera's gonna show up how red I actually am. My, my shirt kind of takes away from my redness, so I don't look as red on camera, I think. I don't know, maybe we'll find out when I go to edit this footage how, how much of a lobster I look like. All right, let me finish strapping this stuff down, and uh, that'll be it. Well, here we are. We brought all this stuff over here. Those containers go all back through there. They're stacking stuff all back there. There's so much stuff everywhere. I mean, they're just piling stuff up. I don't know if they bought this land or if they're leasing this land or what, but there is a pile of stuff out here. Got all that. Got all the transformers back there. Look, they got more electrical boxes back there. That's all the uh, concrete barriers. Still, uh, still no word from the racetrack to see if they want us to take it. I think they're trying to figure out like how to do, how to deal with the forklifts and all. Um, I don't know if they have a forklift or they, if they'd have to rent two forklifts. I bet they'd have to rent two forklifts. I bet they don't have one out there. They used to have a forklift. I don't know if I told you. Me and Lita hand stacked all of these because it was just. Um, 
it was just looking like it was going to be a nightmare to do with the forklift. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just ready to get this done and over with. If we're not coming back tomorrow, let's knock this out. All right, well, I guess that's it. This is the end of the video. It's crazy that we're going to put a two-week load in one video. I'm going to put it all in one video. That's a damn lie, and you know it! Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.